Mariana Gapunenko, was born in Odessa and now lives um, in Vienna and Mainz. She fell in love with the German language as a young girl, began writing in German when she was 16, and went on to get a degree in German studies from the University of Odessa. Who is Martha? Her second novel was awarded the Adalbert von Chamiso Prize and the Alpha Literature Prize in 2013, and she also uh, publishes poetry. In, um, in Who is Martha, the book that we're featuring this year at the festival, Luka Levadsky, a 96-year-old Ukrainian ornithologist, is diagnosed with terminal cancer. He decides to ignore his doctor, skip treatment, and instead recapture his past and style. He travels to Vienna and checks into a luxury suite at the Hotel Imperial, where he will live out his final days and burn through his savings. The great loves of Luca's life were birds and music. It was in Vienna that he first that he knew his greatest professional success at a conference on the bald ibis, and it, there now he can revisit the Musikverein, the great concert hall that made such an impression on him as a child. Although when Lavatsky does go to a concert with an equally elderly newfound friend, they end up behaving like Stadler and Waldorf of the Muppets and almost get kicked out. Levadsky was born in 1914 on the very day that Martha, the last of the now extinct passenger pigeons, died. Levadsky also feels like he's the last of a dying breed, but he manages in his last final, er, in his final extravagant gesture to connect with more people in a few days than he had in his entire life. The novel is available in English by the wonderful New Vessel Press. Arabella Spencer translated um, the book. It's available there, as is uh, the novel by one of our authors last year, Milena Machiko Flashar. So please um, take a look. And Mariana? Thank you, dear Tess. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's great to be here. You know, uh, I always thought there is no New York. But, but then I came, I saw it, and I have to admit, uh, it does exist. Uh, <laughs> and is it okay? And it's great, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Am 6. November 2010 landete Lewatzki in Wien. Es war Samstag und kurz nach vier. Zum Hotel Imperial sagte er mit brechender Stimme zum Cobra Rücken des Taxifahrers. Oh, Imperial, sagte der Taxifahrer mit seiner Lederjacke knirschend. Wissen Sie, dass es das beste Hotel der Stadt ist? Ich weiß, sagte Lewatzki und spürte sein Herz an die Pforten des Hirns klopfen. Wie lange bleiben Sie da? Ich weiß es nicht. Unsere Sprache sprechen Sie aber sehr gut. Das Lob aus dem Mund des, des pechschwarzen Mannes brachte Lewatzki zum Lachen. Woher kommen Sie? fragte Lewatzki mit hartem Akzent. Aus dem Osten. Lewatzki machte eine Pause. Aus der Ukraine. Es fiel ihm auf, dass er log. Er log, obwohl er die Wahrheit sagte. Im politischen Sinn kam Lewatzki tatsächlich aus der Ukraine. Da stand schwarz auf weiß in seinem Pass. Doch historisch gesehen kam er aus zwei Utopien, aus Österreich-Ungarn und der Sowjetunion. Die Ukraine kenne ich, sagte der Taxifahrer. Ich habe in Deutschland Nachrichtentechnik studiert. Mein Mitbewohner kam aus Kiew. Er hieß Petro und aß morgens immer saure Gurken, um sein Kater in den Griff zu kriegen. Er scherzte gerne. Zum Beispiel sagte er, wenn ich mich am Kopf kratzte, nicht kratzen, waschen. Lewatzki brach in ein dreckiges Lachen aus und bat sofort um Entschuldigung. Ja, Petro war lustig. Haben Sie noch Kontakt mit ihm? Der Taxifahrer schüttelte den Kopf. Sein schwarzes Gesicht im roten Licht der Ampel schimmerte violett. Er ist tot. Er fror besoffen auf einer Parkbank im Winter. Oh, sagte Lewatzki. Ja, sagte der Taxifahrer, so etwas wäre ihm an der Elfenbeinküste nicht passiert. Da komme ich her. Lewatzki wurde der Taxifahrer mit jeder neuen Ampel sympathischer. Er hätte ihn gerne über Tageslicht betrachtet. Wie finden Sie unsere Sprache? fragte der Taxifahrer mit rollendem R. Welche Sprache? Die deutsche Sprache, lachte der Taxifahrer. Schön. Lewatzki finde sie sehr schön und romantisch. Der Taxifahrer drehte sich rückenschonend um. Seine Lederjacke knirschte gewaltig. Wissen Sie, das ist das erste Mal, dass ich von jemandem höre, die deutsche Sprache sei schön. Ich freue mich, 
weil ich es genauso sehe. On November 6, 2010, Lavatsky landed in Vienna. It was a Saturday and shortly after four. Hotel Imperial, please, he said in a cracked voice to the broad, cobra-like back of the taxi driver. Oh, Imperial, said the taxi driver, his leather jacket squeaking. You know, it is the best hotel in town. I know, uh, Lavatsky said, and felt his heart pounding at the portals of his brain. How long are you staying there? I don't know. You can speak our language very well. His praise coming from the mouth of a pitch black man made Lavatsky laugh. Where are you from? He asked Lavatsky with a heavy accent. I, I'm from the East, Lavatsky paused. From Ukraine. He noticed he was lying. He was lying even though he was telling the truth. In the political sense, Lavatsky really was from Ukraine. It was written in black and white in his passport. But from a historical perspective, he was from two utopias, Austria-Hungary and the Soviet Union. The one and only thing that smacked of a lie was the realization that Lavatsky had survived two systems of government. I know Ukraine, said the taxi driver. I studied telecommunications in Germany. My roommate was from Kiev. His name was uh, Petro, and he always ate sour pickles in the morning to get his hangover under control. He liked to joke. For example, when I scratch my head, he would say, don't scratch wash. <laughs> Lavetsky broke into a dirty laugh and immediately apologized. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Petro was funny. Are you still in touch with him? The taxi driver shook his head. His black face had a purple sheen to it in the red of the traffic light. He's dead. Froze to death on the park bench in winter. Oh, said Lavatsky. Yes, said the taxi driver. That wouldn't have happened to him in the Ivory Coast. That's where I'm from. With every new traffic light, Lavatsky warmed a little more to the taxi driver. He would like to have examined him by daylight. What do you think of our language? The taxi driver asked him, uh, wh which language? The German language. The taxi driver laughed. Beautiful? Lavatsky thought it was a very beautiful language and romantic. The taxi driver cautiously turned around, his leather jacket scrunching madly. You know, this is the first time I am hearing someone say that German is a beautiful language. I am pleased because I think it is too. Well, I am pleased to hear it. Lavatsky said. He would have liked to continue talking about the beauty of the German language, but didn't say anything. He remained silent and took pleasure in the rising bubbles of joy, savored the experience of sitting beneath the roof of a car with a special person, a black taxi driver, Ivorian by birth, someone who had studied telecommunications, who had borrowed the German language. Lavatsky smiled in the darkness of the taxi. What do you think of the EU? The man from the Ivory Coast wanted to know. Uh, the EU is a blessing. Uh, migratory birds, for example, have always been real Europeans. <laughs> That's terrific, said the ta taxi driver. <laughs> terrific, he repeated softly as if a state secret had just been entrusted to him and he had understood its meaning. Lavatsky's drinking cane exited the taxi like a gentle hoof followed by a slightly clumsier Lavatsky. A liveried bellhop disappeared through a side door with his suitcase. Goodbye, Lavatsky waved to the taxi driver. A chain of fireflies lit up the darkness of the car's interior. Take care, the taxi driver shouted. Long live the birds. Smiling, Lavatsky stepped from the revolving door into the hotel lobby. A reservation has been made for me. Lavatsky is my name. Luka Lovatsky.